Sydney Sweeney just being in the moment on camera. We are talking about reality on Max. Don't call it HBO Max, starring Sydney Sweeney. It is out there now. Sorry, I have a sense of humor. I was on your driver's license. That's right. Okay, well, I lied. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, this stars uh, Sydney Sweeney from uh, first season of White Lotus as reality winner. If that name rings a bell, she was uh, arrested for slipping NSA secrets to the website The Intercept uh, with information about Russian collusion in the 2016 elections and a misinformation campaign. From there, uh, The Intercept was asking for whistleblowers to provide information about that very topic. She did so. And uh, this is uh, written and directed by Tina Satter based on her play. And the play is basically a direct transcript of the entire conversation between the two FBI agents that go to Reality Winner's house and Reality Winner. Uh, the, FBI, the FBI agents are played by Josh Hamilton and Marshawn Davis. And, um, you know, this pretty much unfolds in real time, pretty much. It's, you know, they, the, she, she pulls into her driveway, they talk to her, there's some discussion about what to do with her pets. Uh, it all seems very, you know, kind of awkwardly casual conversation about CrossFit and stuff. And then finally, the actual interrogation begins. And, uh, you know, we find out what happened and why. And it's a really illuminating look at what would uh, drive somebody who was an, uh, an honorably discharged Air Force veteran, uh, somebody who spoke three different Middle Eastern languages, somebody who wanted to be redeployed in the field, um, would make the decision to become a whistleblower. And then briefly at the end, there's this uh, look at how uh, the, you know, the right wing media, certainly, but the media or the, the government tried to sort of tar her as this like kind of foaming at the mouth anti-America extremist when actually she thought she was doing the right thing for her country. She thought it was committing a patriotic act to sort of get this information out there about um, things that had happened in the in the previous presidential election. Uh, it's it's a pretty taut piece. It, it is. There's not a lot of music. There's not, you know, it doesn't really stray from the area. You're pretty much spending the entire movie in and out of that house. And for the most part, I mean, I mean, Marchand Davis is really good, but it's kind of a two hander between mm -hmm. Sidney Sweeney and Josh Hamilton. And they're both very much up to the task. I'm a big Josh Hamilton fan. I think, you know, um, he has, you know, popped up in things over the years like Take Me to the River and... He's the dad uh, in eighth grade. He's the dad in eighth grade. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Just a lot of cool indies o along the years. And so, like, maybe not a household name, but I think, you know, one of our... Mm -hmm. One of our great character actors, um, you know, who who is just just comes in, does the thing, and 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 exits, you know. Um, so yeah, I, I thought this movie really works. It's like eighty three minutes, which mm -hmm. is all it needs to be. Right. It, it it really sort of maintains this tension throughout, and and uh, I thought it was well done. I thought it was really well done too, and it reminded me a lot of Craig Zobel's Compliance. Mm, for sure, yes. Right, like there are these mundane conversations that have this sinister subtext yes. right and you know it's there and people are talking about seemingly mundane things you know banal things about like oh what kind of dog is that or whatever it is like oh i have a kind of cat and you know crossfit um but this the way that there's like maybe not the the laugh there should be the way that you know in in josh hamilton's eyes he signals so much about the fact that he's really all business yeah. you know and he knows what he's doing and he comes off as like kind of a dork and his like short sleeve button down shirt and his khakis mm -hmm. and i think actually he's unrecognizable with, with the hair and makeup on him i don't think you would know it was necessarily him he kind of disappears into that role but so much of it too lies on Sydney Sweeney just being in the moment on camera, mm -hmm. right? Because she's got to do a couple different things at once. She's got to not give too much away to these people, right? But also indicate to us a rising level of fear. Right. And so she's got to do both of those things at the same time. And the camera is just on her. Like a lot of it is just close up of her face or like, like a, a, a middle kind of shot where she's just in a, a, an empty room and you can see her thinking in real time. You can see her wheels spinning. Like, how yes. do I answer this question? Um, I think you don't necessarily need to know anything about reality winner to know 
this is incredibly tense. I think if, if you do know the story, it, it helps a bit, but I don't think you need to remember her or, or know her yeah, or know what she did. It, it's a woman dealing with two FBI agents in her house, and they are having this... There are two conversations happening. There's the one that, that is going on, which is, like you say, very banal and surface level, but both sides are very cagely kind of, what am I saying? What am I sharing? What am I not? What am I withholding? Yeah. What what does my face say, you know, like, mm -hmm. and yeah, they're, they're doing that the whole time. And she's, she's escalating as far as like, she seems very breezy and just like a confident young woman and all is well. She just wants to get her groceries out of the car and that's it. She'll be fine. Mm -hmm. um, and then increasingly she's got to like, let you know, okay, this is really getting scary now. Yeah. And they know more than I think they know. Um, and so it remains a mystery as far as, what her intentions are, what she really did, what they really know about her up until the very end. And that was just a great piece of acting. And I also, I love the fact that the dialogue all comes from the FBI reports. That's a really cool conceit. And yeah. they don't lean too heavily on, you know, the typing, the typing and the redactions. Like you see documents. Sure. And you see like the recording, like the audio, like the little blips of the audio recording. But I feel like the director goes to that just enough. Yes. Just enough yes. times to remind us what the origin is of this without like being too whiz bang crazy with it. You know, I yeah. think it it amplifies the tension and it it does what it needs to do at just yeah. the right times to move the story forward. So and, yeah, this was really good. And because it's the transcript, then you know later when media people or government people are trying to put words into her mouth, they're like, well, she never said that. That didn't happen. Like, you know, we, yeah. we've seen the transcript. We've heard it the entire conversation from start to finish. And so, you know, like this, when, they, when they try and sort of paint her as this – this other kind of like you know anti-patriotic radicals like right. well, no that's y'all made that shit up i think because of the timing of it too because this was like 2017 yeah. that the the sentence that she received of four years in prison seems so disproportionate and politically motivated right oh totally yeah i mean because it's you know it's, it's it's the beginning of the trump administration and she's basically whistleblowing about something with with which he was in some way or his campaign was in some way complicit uh, and, and so the, yeah, the, the fact that, that, that this happened, they really kind of just threw the book at her. I think she's currently like out and sort of on kind of a probationary mm -hmm. thing until next year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And just the timing of having this come out now when like other people did a lot of other stuff with top <laughs> secret documents. Yeah. <laughs> mm. So it's, mm, it's timely. Mm. <laughs> it maybe drags here and there a little bit. But I'm glad it's not much longer than it is. It's yeah. um, it's the right amount of uh, of length there. And it's sort of engrossing. So I would say I give it like a 7.9. Yeah, I, that's, I'm right there too. 7.8. I think this is really well done. Uh, and And I think it is effective as a kind of teleplay you know like i mean mm -hmm. yes you could see this in a theater and it'd be cool but i think it absolutely works as a very sort of like one location handful of characters like i said virtually real time feeling kind of story it really plays out well on tv so Reality. yeah it is it it's is on street. max now it's on max Woo! <laughs> so check that out